Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Agostino Zingo Show with me, your host, Agostino. This is episode number 115, hopefully. And I've not fucked up the numbers again, like usual. But anyway, this is episode number 115. Welcome back. How are you feeling? How are you doing? Great. I'm doing amazing. I hope you guys are well hydrated, well rested, and well lubricated um, in all the necessary parts. I'm very, 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 very tired this morning. Um, what is it? It's now what Wednesday morning, and I'm tired as fuck. I just came back from a four mile run, and I, like a bloody idiot, I stubbed my toe on the ground. I kind of stacked it, and now my big toe is sort of sprained, so I can't exactly flex my toe too good which I'm hoping doesn't affect my running tomorrow. So I'm hoping when I rest up later on, it doesn't affect it. I'm trying, I, I don't want to ice it or anything because I've heard icing um, st- muscle, what do you call it, strains and stuff is um, counterintuitive. Someone like, a, I think a guy called uh, Kelly Starrett, who's the creator of Mobility World, a kind of mobility specific exercise that concentrates on making sure you're nice and limber. He mentioned a while back that actually icing isn't good for inflammation. You should kind of stretch it out and stuff, which is going to hurt even more than it's, it's going to hurt more than I ever imagined. I'm sure in my life, but I'm going to have to try it out. But yeah, my toe is absolutely messed up right now. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm assuming I'll be limping to, on the way to work, which is gonna be annoying, you know, because you always get people asking, "Oh, what's wrong? What happened?" It's like, look chill out man you know i was out there chasing my dreams and i stacked on the you know i stacked against a hater or something but i kept on running you know because i'm persistent and i don't stop you know um haters are like hurdles to me you know i might buckle after one or two of them but i'm gonna keep on running you know those videos that you see those like um blooper videos of a of like a steeplechase or like a of a hurdle race in like a high school somewhere and it's usually girls because girls are horrible at running hurdles no it can be anybody but anyway um let's say it's a group of young teenage people right and they're running hurdles during some sort of school outing and there's three or four of them that begin to stack on the hurdles and like a domino effect it seems to affect everyone else but they just keep on going because you know that level i guess when you're that age when you're between the ages of like 13 and 18 it's much worse that you stack and you kind of fall over and the ambulance has to be called and all that sort of shit. That's super embarrassing. You're better off just like stacking six or seven hurdles in a row and limping across the finishing line and having that be like a kind of like LOL moment during the after party when you're doing massive amounts of beer pongs then stacking a one or two, breaking an ankle and having an ambulance called and you being on a fluffy oxygen mask as you've been carried into the ambulance van and, and your friends are Snapchatting your misery and sharing it with all their friends. I'd assume that's why. But hopefully that's not going to happen to me. But yeah, my toe is a bit swollen at the moment. It feels, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in extreme pain right now. But like a big boy, I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to get on with my life because that's what adults do. You get on with it, all right? It's too much of this crybaby and stuff happening in society nowadays, you know, where everyone's getting their knickers and a bunch of other things that don't even involve them, you know? What happened to, what happened, what happened to just, what happened to minding your own business, huh? What happened to that? Mind your own business. People don't do that enough too often. And they don't suck it up. You're a grown up. Suck it up. You lost some money? Suck it up, right? The other day I was in, I was DJing in a bar and I think some guy lost his ring. I don't know how you lose a ring, but he lost his ring. I'm assuming whilst he was drinking or whilst he was putting, you know, throwing up gum fingers in the air to a fucking Michael Bublé song. His finger um, decides to run away. His ring decides to run away from his finger and he lost it. And guess what he did? He made everyone partake in the looking of it. Excuse me, have you seen my ring? Excuse me, have you seen my ring? No, we haven't seen your ring because we don't care. Grow up, suck it up, move on. You lost your ring. Next time, don't be an idiot. And keep it safe somewhere. I don't know. Like on your finger. Do you hear people do that sort of stuff when they lose things and they get everyone involved around them? I just take the L. And I'm a person who loses stuff quite regularly. Right? But I take the L and keep it moving. I don't get strangers involved in my fucking, um, what do you call it, rescue mission. No. If my possessions, if my possessions decide to go hide and go seek, it's my fault if I can't then go and seek them and find them. If I can't find them, then it is what it is. You just keep on moving. You don't get everyone else involved in your nonsense and your flipping rescue mission. Oh, excuse me, can you find my ring? No. No. Why? Because I don't care. I just don't care. This fake kind of like chip it, like kind of like um, 
banding together to help people get over their things that they want to get over. You know, it's like, you know what it's like, right? Kind of, this is going to sound fucking nuts, right? But it's kind of like, you know, when you see a lady on a, on the train and she's got a buggy and she's doing that thing where she wants help and she's trying to like take it down. You're like, nah, I'm good. You got that thing on the train. You can get it off a train. I'm just, I'm going to wait for you to get off it. Why should I help you? Oh, can you help? Why? Oh, I thought you went, nah, I don't want to help you. I don't care. It's your baby. It's your buggy. Take it off there. And if anything, usually, you know, not being mean, but if it's a newborn child and it's a new mother, you might be carrying a bit of extra weight. The lifting, right? The bending down and the lifting up of the buggy might do you some good. Might do you some good. All right? Yes, nuts to say, but it's the truth. I don't want to lift your buggy. I want to wait for you to get off the train so I can continue on my commute. <sighs> Yeah, I know. Maybe stubbing my toe isn't the best way to start a podcast because you end up starting it angry. But fuck it. I'm going to be mad, mad, mad. No, nah, I can't be mad. I wish I could. I wish I could be one of those mad people. Like today on, on my way back from the run, I was crossing, um, I was waiting at uh, lights. There's this weird, there's this weird new um, bike path thingy, which I'm sure is going to cause a new, uh, and, and in, and in, in, and, and, a lot of accidents and yeah and yeah and yeah and yeah whatever it's i'm sure this new um bike lane traffic thing they've installed in Stratford is going to cause a lot of accidents if you if i have to describe it it sort of looks like a scalectric track um it's kind of like um at the front of Stratford and in the nat west and they've sort of made these uh bike paths that kind of intersect in one bit and then one bit goes left one bit goes right but I'm assuming in rush hour traffic or um, when everyone's coming back from work or when everyone's leaving in the morning to go to work, I'm assuming that place is going to be fucking nuts. Or just in general, when Shafford becomes a bit more metropolitan, because at the moment you don't get a lot of um, foot traffic on the side of Shafford I'm talking about. You usually get it through the shopping centre or towards the station. But maybe once the other side of Shafford becomes a little bit more pop and become a little bit more populated with people it might cause accidents but it, it doesn't look it doesn't, looks like a great recipe for disaster in my opinion anyway um because there's so many different junctions there's cars coming in going from the right to the left cars going from the left to the right um buses going straight forward so you have to wait a little bit at the traffic at the at the traffic lights right you gotta wait a little bit longer than you'd you know you'd like to wait but it's not that long, you know, it's probably like 10 seconds, 15 seconds, if that. But when you're standing at traffic light, it always feels a bit longer. And at times, tends to like slow down, especially if you're in a rush to get somewhere, which everyone kind of pretends they are. But, you know, what are you in a rush to get to? Work, huh? To a job that a monkey could do? Really? Huh? To meet your friends? Huh? To get on the early train? Huh? What are you in a rush for? Relax. So anyway, we're waiting at tra traffic light. And then um, I'm saying that how I couldn't be angry. There's a guy next to me, right? And he's, he's, he's like this man of his bikes. He's holding his bike in his hands. I'm assuming, well, he's holding his bike up and he's kind of like pushing it along. So I'm assuming he works somewhere near where the traffic lights are because he's not riding his bike to where he is because I'm assuming it's probably more of a ball leg to ride it than just to kind of walk with it. And he's getting visibly angry every time a bus or a car um, or another bike or a motorcycle kind of brushes past us because that means the traffic light hasn't, um gone to red and allowed us to go past and he's getting visibly angry every passing vehicle of some sort is making his blood pressure boil and he's doing that <sighs> that shaking his head there's nothing there's nothing that makes a man sh there's nothing that makes a man look more like a baby than getting annoyed by things that are out of your control like oh the traffic won't stop <sighs> i want to cross it's like huh you're a grown-up you're a dad you have grandkids nieces and nephews what are you doing like it's nuts he was getting visibly angry like and i was i was kind of laughing looking at him thinking wow that's what you call real rage like he can turn that thing on like at a cool you know what i mean at a flick of a switch mate like boom on you know the kind of person that we you know when you're at oyster card machine and you feel like somebody's twitch somebody's fishing around you and you turn around and there's a guy or a girl doing that kind of like looking over the shoulder thing like left, right, left, right. Like relax, right? This is a Oyster card machine. Generally, the people that have to use the Oyster card machine generally shouldn't be using Oyster card machine, right? They generally like, you know, a little bit computer illiterate, a little bit slow. And plus, you know, generally, if you're in an Oyster card machine um, queue 
or you're at a station somewhere, usually a station that you're at is a station, you know, it's, it's, which is quite busy. It's frequented by people that might not be from the area or tourists as they may be. So you have to give people time, right? And no one wants to fuck up their travel. No one wants to pay more than they have to pay. Just relax, right? Relax. It's not, not that big of a rush. Plus, if you're, in a, if you're in an underground station and you're waiting for your Oyster card to get topped up, what's the most you're going to wait at the platform? Another six minutes for a train? Really? Six minutes? Take it easy. Take it easy, right? If it's like a rail line service or something, I kind of get it in that respect. Sometimes I would, I'd rather take the risk and just jump on a train and pay for the ticket when I get on there and just explain to the ticket inspector, look, I know I don't have the ticket right now, but I'm happy to pay for it and see if he lets you off. Sometimes he does, sometimes he won't, blah, blah, blah. But underground station, relax, take it easy. But that same personality is the one, is the same thing I kind of saw in that guy at traffic lights, right? That person that gets really annoyed when somebody's taking, I don't know, a minute longer at the Oyster card machine. The guy at Traffic Lights was getting really pissed off, like, oh, this traffic won't stop. Come on, hurry up. It's like, relax, man. Take a deep breath and chill the fuck out. And he was only going around the corner, too. It wasn't like he was going super far. It's like, chill, man. Your time will come to cross. But, you know, c'est la vie. C'est la vie. You see weird things in Stratford. But, yeah, I stubbed my toe. My toe is kind of sprained now. It was my own fault, really, because I was running. And I don't know why. You know when you run? And um, you lock eyes with somebody, but you're not looking at them. You're just like kind of daydreaming. So I was running. This little kid, this little girl came by in her school uniform on her way to go to school. And I just looked at her. And for some reason, I was locked in looking at her for a good five seconds. And then boom, boom, I stacked it. And I stacked it on a bit of con concrete that I see all the time when I'm running. It's a little bit that sticks out. It's quite like a, it's quite like an obvious thing that you see on the floor all the time. And I saw, I was like, oh. Luckily, I didn't stack it and fall on the floor. I sort of stacked it and stabilized myself and kind of like kept on running. But I knew, I knew my, my toe was going to be inflamed. For you know what? Let me just run through this pain now. But I knew when I stopped, my toe was going to flame up. Um, it was going to inflame in some sort or swell, or swell up. And now looking at it as I'm talking now at the podcast on the podcast, I can see that it's visibly bigger than my left toe. So that's the present I got this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Um, ran four miles. I'm probably not going to be able to run again tomorrow, but who knows? Maybe a few more Billy exercises might help. Maybe I might resort to icing my toe, which I know you're not meant to do, but maybe that might help. But it's such a bummer when these things happen, man. So it's, it's an annoying thing that takes a lot longer to heal than it should, isn't it? I'm spraining a toe or a finger and stuff. It's, it's, you have that niggly pain for ages. It doesn't seem to subside, and suddenly it kind of goes away, but it takes a while for it to go, so... Hoping I'll have to be out for too long. But yeah, those are the scrooges of running on the streets, unfortunately. When you're running on treadmill, I guess you don't have these kind of... Sometimes you do, in it, right? You see people on treadmills that fall over all the time. Sometimes when they kind of daydream or they lose their train of thought. But unfortunately, I have suffered an injury. But apart from that, I am well and okay and feeling great this week. It's been a pretty brilliant week. Sober October is still going on strong. I'm still feeling amazing. I still feel like, um, as I keep mentioning that, you know, not being of uh, not being hungover is one of the most of underrated things ever in mankind. And I implore more people out there to take um, it prolonged periods of um, prolonged periods of a break or a prolonged break from drinking any sort of alcoholic beverages. If if you don't care about your health, just for mental clarity and stuff, or just so you know you could do it. Most of these things aren't necessarily. Most of these things aren't even a health thing, right? They don't. They're not really um, predicated by health. It's more so, you want you want to tell yourself, or you want to show yourself that you're not dependent on anything, right? That you can cut things out at will, and not feel like you've lost a limb, and not feel like you've lost a loved one, and not feel like your life is crumbling. Um, all, all it's crumbling ar around you, right? Because for instance, some people tie a lot of relevance to alcohol and even to food right you get people that say they're hangry right when they get hung when they get hungry they get angry for some reason which is you know it's fucking annoying there's kind of like um they give they give themselves like a getaway a get a get out of jail free card right they get to be a dickhead because they're angry because they're hungry for some reason like grow up like and again from adults as well that are saying sort of things like a grown person saying they're hang hangry is like, you know, one of those things I want to I want to drive my face into a concrete wall. But anyway, for the most part, people tie a lot of relevance or tie a lot of significance to things like alcohol, right? Because it's something you do in social life, it's stuff that you do when you meet your friends, it's stuff that you do that makes you feel better, stuff that you do that makes you forget about the realities of the world, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes, more often than not, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a plaster, really, isn't it? It's a plaster on an open wound. It can only do so, as so much. And 
you know, like it or not, you're going to have to face up to your issues. And the best way to face up with to them is with a clear and sober mind, as my mind is right now. My mind wasn't clear and sober enough to avoid me stacking and spreading my big toe. But apart from that, it's quite sober. So, yeah, those, that's why I like doing it, just so I know... Just so I can, just so I kind of give myself an assurance, I can reassure myself that I can stop at work. Because sometimes you have this narrative that you run through in your head, in it that you you can do this, you can do that. Um, you're you're somebody that stands up for this. You're somebody that's that kind of person. But then when the chips fall and you have to confront life, that narrative can kind of disappear very very quickly. But a way to kind of solidify that narrative and to write yourself a new story. Write myself a new song is to abstain from things that you really enjoy because I really enjoy the taste of alcohol. I really enjoy the effects it has on my body and my mind. I really enjoy the fact that I'm able to be um, less, I don't know, fidgety and I get to acclimatize to my environment. I enjoy every all the benefits of alcohol I love, right? It's not like I don't like not getting drunk. I fucking love getting smashed. But I think with that, with, with me admitting that I like alcohol and I like getting fucked up, it's also very good for me to know that I can stop doing something that I really enjoy just for the hell of it. Yes, it's a health benefit tied into it. Yes, my workouts will be... Um, will be worth a lot more if I'm not drinking alcohol and I've got and I've got a good balanced diet and I'm sleeping well. Yes, all those things will benefit, but for the most part, I'm just doing it just just because for the sake of it. So let's see how I feel by the end of October. So October continues. Anyway, let's get right into the topics because we don't have much time and we have to get cracking with life's incredible journey. So number one, sorry, on the topic list I wanted to talk about was mini n64 so this has been rumored for a while now because i'm sure some of you um gamer people are more aware of this than i am but a while back a, a, a mini super nintendo came out and i saw rumors of a mini playstation one coming out too so effectively there were like um mini versions of these um influential uh, gaming consoles, things that, you know, shaped a lot of our childhood, especially if you're somebody that's born in the 80s or the 90s, you know, N64 and PS1 were fu were fundamental pieces of electronic gadgets that you had to have in your living room. Um, and we, we saw, so effectively what they are, they're mini consoles that effectively have emulators inside of them where you can have like a set amount of games pre-built into the console itself. You just plug that into a TV with, uh, I'm assuming a HDMI port, but just with one port sort of thing, and then you can play at will. Now, um, I've, I have I kind of mentioned to somebody that would be sick to the N64 version, because I know they did like, uh, an original Nintendo, like a NES, which I had back in the day too. It's funny because I only got Nintendos when I was younger. I didn't get Playstations. And if I remember correctly, it was because Playstations were more expensive than Nintendo. Even though Nintendo was quite expensive back then, um, it was significantly cheaper than the PlayStation. Because I remember in N64 when I got brand new from Curry's for Christmas one year, I'm assuming it was under £200 and the PlayStation was plus 200 No, it was under, yeah, I think it was like a 165 or something. And the PlayStation was like 250 without any games. Like, it was insane how much much money it was. And I, imagine, and I remember Nintendo being a lot more cost effective because it had another it had game had a couple of games included it um well, if you bought it from argos one of those places you got you remember that shitty controller that you get with a console you get that shitty controller that had like 17 buttons on it i think it was like a kaz or raz maz or something you know those like shitty controls that you give to your friends if your friends came over to play a computer game you'd get the og controller and they'd always get the fucking shitty one and sometimes if you were lucky and you went to your friend's house and they were i don't know in the toilet or they left you alone in the room you get you got to touch their original controller and it was like <gasps> it was like touching the holy grail Do you know I mean? like jesus christ the holy grail santo domingo right you're like so over the moon about it but um yeah i remember my nintendo was my first console my super super nes that was the first thing that i ever got and then the second thing that i got was a super um the Nintendo 64, 64-bit 64 con con console. You, you forget how important or how influential it was to have 64-bit graphics on a computer console, right? They were bragging about this so much, man. Remember Super Mario and Super uh, Super Mario Kart and Zelda and 007 on this console, 007 with a golden um, controller, like epic times. And you remember when they had that thing from Japan that you could buy that you could plug in underneath it and you could play like Japanese games and shit. And it had like a thing where you could like do the internet. Um, I think it was similar to like a Dreamcast. There was a thing that you could plug in at the bottom of an Nintendo 64. It kind of made it like a, it kind of made it like a, let's say like a, what's that thing on a PC? 
not the monitor, but the um, CPU. It sort of like made it, it sort of like added the CPU to the bottom of the Nintendo 64. was fucking nuts, man. What a great time to be alive. I love that Nintendo 64. One of my favorite consoles to date. Um, PlayStation, uh, PS, Pro Evolution Soccer on this was fucking incredible. Probably, probably to this day, because, and again, some people will think it's sacrilege, but probably to this day, probably still one of the best um, football games or soccer games on any console that ever existed. Uh, Pro Vision Soccer. I know for some people, they disagree and they say, oh no, man, how can you say that? Pro Vision Soccer wasn't even that good. FIFA's much better. Fuck FIFA. FIFA's always been too slippery for me. The players are like, they're skating on ice. The, <coughs> the graphics engine was always a bit weird, right? The players' movements was a bit dodgy. You could, you could score really weird goals that you couldn't score in any other... Um, football football game I just never really got to grips with um, FIFA but Pro Vision Soccer on the fucking N64 was insane let me try and get a video up of it right PS on N64 let's see if someone's got it it was so good man so fucking good I'm gonna get up on the screen now so you guys can see and for you listening on the podcast you have to bear with me whilst I describe this but yeah man this was so good the beginning openings credits like how can you not like this man the graphics were insane i wish we've seen a lot of that coming back nowadays aren't we with um i think um the org stuff on their org have that um asap rocky's label they have that what well, they have an online store that's like, similar kind of that way right the kind of graphics they done on them is similar to this um i know spaghetti boys have the same sort of graphic design on their website but it'd be cool someone could kind of bring this sort of like style of graphic design back right Super cheesy. <sighs> Man, how could you not like this game? It was so fucking sick. Controller pack, man. I would play this right now. Honestly. Oh, yeah, that old school France 98 kit was on here, innit? This is 1998 then, right? Bloody hell, I forgot how long ago this was. None of the players' names were correct because they didn't have licenses, but you kind of got the gist of who was who. Hold on, yeah, let, let me go to the lineup, right? So you see a lineup of, of the players with the fake names. So this is France v. Greece in this simulator. You've got um, C. Didier, you've got S. Lablan, you've got S. David, you've got M. Lecompe, J. Um, Leroux, M. Upont, you've got Thierry, right? Who's probably, we know who that is. Um, we've got El Funes, Royer, Chantilly, Dubois. I wonder who's the down on that one, I don't know. And in Greece, you just got mad um, Greek type names, but they don't. No one, no one knows who the players actually are. I love that thing about man, Pro Vision Soccer, so fucking good. The panning when it comes, oh yeah, before kickoff, you used to pan around the stadium. That's the first time I kind of saw that thing, right? So you got you got groups of the atmosphere. <sighs> this commentator recently died, didn't it? I think as well, the Pro Vision Soccer commentator. So R.I.P. to him. But fucking hell, man, such a good engine, man. It looks amazing. Remember, you could do real good passing football. Um, this is probably the time. This is why I like Pro Evolution Soccer. Thinking about it now, going for um, thinking back, well, because you could actually uh do the whole passing tiki tackers type football um play. Because I think most football games back in the day weren't like that. They were usually like a football games usually back in the day were like uh, Antonio Valencia how he plays right, kick run cross. You just used to kick it and run and try and shoot from angles. But with Pro Evolution Soccer, it was probably one of the first games they could actually pass and move. And um, score really g- good, amazing goals from outside the area. You could score goals on the cross. You could score amazing headers. Man, Pro Vision was a great fucking era. Um, I can't wait for that uh, N64 Mini to come out. I'm going to pause at the moment. But yeah, I can't wait for N64 Mini to come out. Um, at the moment, I think it's rumoured date is supposed to come out soon. Right? I'm not sure what the rumoured date is in that hype piece article. But I think that mock-up that I've got ahead on the screen, I think that was a... Artist illustration because I'm sure it's not going to be cable the controller. I'm sure it's going to be Bluetooth. Um, maybe sure. I'm not sure. Sure, sure. But the article, what's the article say? What the release date? The Nintendo released N64 Mini back in 2016. Then the Super Nintendo Classic Edition last year. So one, two. So again, they'll probably do one later to see if they did 16, 17, 18. I'm assuming, right? And they've got also oh, they've got official images of it actually, right? Uh, a contest that you claims to have photographed the screen. Um, I cannot contact. Da, 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 da. So I'm, they're streaming sometime this year. And it's going to be USB ports for the controller as well. I'm assuming, right? So let me try and get this up on the screen so I can show you, dudes. Um, yeah, this looks fucking awesome. I can't wait to see if this actually happens. But yeah, it, it makes complete sense. And then, oh, imagine if they get the Dreamcast or they bring the what was the one? Um, 
Is the GameCube probably too recent, right? If they do a mini version of the GameCube, because I really like. I thought the GameCube was an underrated console too. I think I'm a bit of a Nintendo fanboy. Having, you know, it's it's the console that shaped my childhood for the most part. But yeah, that looks fucking cool, man. So USBs instead of the usual kind of controller for the game overall reset functions. Yeah, fucking no, I can't wait, man. I can't wait to see this. Hopefully, it comes out very very soon, and we get. Uh, uh, a much detailed look at it. I'm assuming it's going to be priced fairly cheaply too, same as the uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo and the NES that came out recently, the mini versions. So yeah, let's see what happens. What's next on the docket here? Um, what if, what did I write this? What a fucking idiot. What happened here? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw this story on Twitter yesterday. Because <laughs> I was um, thinking the other day, like, oh, there's a few clubs I've, I've, I haven't been to in London that I've been meaning to go to for a while. And one that popped into my mind was Printworks, right? Printworks was this place that was billed as, like, kind of, like, one of the places that was going to save London nightlife because it promoted the idea that people could party um, in a nightclub during the day, right? They, did, they didn't need to go... Sorry, they could, they could party during the day with enough time or during, during the afternoon away to the evening with enough time for them to get the underground train home. So the whole premise behind it was that it opened from 12 to 12 which then would allow people to go and get the 24 hour tube back to their destinations and for the older i guess i won't say the older but for the clientele that don't that want to get fucked up and want to go for a prolonged period of time but don't want to stay out until like 6 a.m this is a good way to get around it and plus because venues in london necessarily aren't um open um, there's not a lot of venues out there that are open after 3 a.m. It probably makes sense if you're going to open a new venue to try and get a license that allows you to open a little bit earlier in the afternoon, serve alcohol a little bit earlier, and then just close at the regular time so then you get a few more hours in. And um, the way they built Printworks, or it's housed in a former uh, printing factory, which makes it, you know, architecturally makes it a very interesting design because it's more of a rectangular shape, so the printing rolls can fit into the place. But they've blacked out all the windows, any sort of natural light coming in so you don't necessarily get a gauge of how light it is out there if you go if you turn up at 3 p.m so i've heard so you kind of get this really immersive experience they've got amazing lighting in there it's just like an, it's just an amazing place and recently um the team that were behind kind of um reimagining the space and kind of bringing it back into the public eye were the london warehouse projects but they're not part of it anymore i think they're doing their own or london warehouse events sorry um l l w e they did an re interview recently with resident advisor on resident advisor exchange where they kind of talk about you know they kind of parted ways with the whole printworks management team but they were the first kind of promoters to kind of go go into that space and kit it out and you know lend a hand to the lighting lend a hand to the audio how that was structured and the programming and now they've got like a slew of other promoters who are kind of handling most of the programming i think if i think the hydra who do really good promotions or hydra or much sure of it's dirt or the hydra but they've got a few promotions coming up recently that are going to be pretty good i think they've got one with dixon and arm coming up um later this year i think towards the end of december but anyway, so I had this in my mind. Thinking, you know, I, I really want to go print work. So I don't know. I was just on Twitter fucking around. I t and I just searched for print works and I stumbled upon this article, um, which again, it's funny to me, but I guess it was annoying if you were there during the time it happened. But supposedly some absolute genius bod um, decided to hang on one of the pipes that runs through print works and decided to do pull ups. Right. I don't know, just fucking around, you know, boy shit, fucking around, trying to impress a girl, trying to impress his friends, or maybe he's just high off his mind and he just, he thought that, you know, pipe was actually a pull-up bar or it was a ladder that was going to get him closer to his dreams. Well, whatever the fact is, he ended up doing this, he ended up, of course, exerting too much force and he ended up pulling one of the pipes down, ended up flooding the entire club. So they had to evacuate it before the night ended. Um, which if, which um, fortunately isn't going to affect their future events, but it's just fucking ridiculous to see this kind of thing happen. I've got a video of it now that I'm going to play. It's on the Evening Standard website, but I'll link it in the show notes if you're not watching it, so you can see it yourself. Hold on, where is it? There we go. So yeah, um, bring it to a start here. Zoom in a little bit. Play. So it says, uh, a show at one of London's major nightclubs ended in a fast when a pipe burst. Video shows the extent of the flooding. So it's flooded compl everywhere, like literally like, um, I think, foot deep of flooding. Um, one club girl, club girl has told the Sunday that it was caused by a reveller um, trying to do pull-ups on a pipe at Printworks London. So it's literally like towards your ankle deep full of water in this print, in print factory. The venue in South East London has not responded to a request for comment. 
how annoying must that be, right? You go to an event in that space and some donut decides to do that. Only in London will something like this happen. Uh, the article kind of continues saying it. Um, one cup to da, 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 da. The claim has been repeated numerous times on social media. A spokesman uh, for the Robin Hyde Club said uh, Sunday Solid Grooves event at Primrose London was halted just before 9 p.m. So they had like, you know, a few miles to go after an internal pipe was damaged, causing more water to come into um to the venue the building was cleared in accordance with safety procedures and we are grateful to guests of, uh, for their cooperation understanding how annoying it must be right to have to be escorted out of print was because some donut does this so then you're left stranded in the middle of the robin height tunnel or near the robin height tunnel and now you have to go somewhere else to go party to kind of get your rocks off because I'd imagine part of the allure of going to print works is that because it starts early you can kind of go get fucked up um get turned up turn up whatever and then you can just go home right you can just like stumble out chat with your friends chat with strangers outside mill about for a bit and then get the night bus or the or, or an uber or the underground and go home um but when you're at 10 when you leave at 10 9 p.m you kind of feel like you've been shortchanged and you want to go somewhere else but imagine you're steaming right you're full of drugs and alcohol you want to go to another club and if the club has anything any sense about them they're probably going to not let you in but knowing london because most clubs close at 3 or 2 a.m they want to let you in because they need to make money so they'll let you in you end up going in there you end up ending up fucking ruining the mood for people inside that bar because you're coming in way too hot it's just an absolute fuck sh fuck show for everyone else so again just boy energy in it like just want to show up to your friend what are you doing um so the it, article continues we're investigating reports of an incident that is believed to have caused the leak we expect necessary repair work to be completed shortly um and there will be no impact on the forthcoming events ticket purchases who were affected on sunday's event will be contacted by email email in due course the sold out solid Grizz event had been running from noon on sunday matt paul 90 year old electrician from bexley he told the standard <laughs> that's that's a typical fucking print words customer though isn't it matt 19 electrician bexley heath uh told standard everyone was imagine and imagine that too imagine coming down for bexley heath you probably rented a hotel i'm assuming right you probably you and your mates probably put some money together to stay in a holiday inn or any sort of hotel that's probably within that proximity right you've kind of stocked up on your necessary um party gifts and then some dickhead decides to do pull-ups on the on the pipe and you ruined it it's just annoying isn't it everyone was enjoying themselves it was a good night i was on the balcony upstairs directly above where the burst the burst pipe was all of a sudden i saw people walking off with everyone saying it's flooding you could see the reflection of the lights on the floor the light switched on the music turned off and someone said over the speaker that there had been a burst pipe and everyone needed to evacuate it's annoying and he continued the rumor has that someone was doing pull-ups on a pipe which caused it to burst everyone was a bit shocked some people were laughing but others were quite annoyed it could have been worse the electrics could have got caught in the water so the security did well to react to the way they did yeah it's true imagine that man everyone getting <laughs> electrocuted in the entire club because of one donuts actions um yeah so so hopefully it's going to be back in action and ready to go because they've got a few interesting events that i'm sure some people would want to go to um again but boy energy in it like only lads could do something like that can't you just enjoy yourself right always have to be the one that it's like it's like that advert um that um um i think it's, d d does the advert say i think the advert's an anti-alcohol advert right you remember the advert where the guy there's a there's a, a group of young people drinking on the street somewhere and then the video switches and a dude thinks he's like the dude's in like a superhero outfit and he's climbing up the scaffolding and everyone's like in amazement and going wow amazing and that's what he thinks in his head but in reality it's actually just just a dude that's drunk too much and he's hanging on top of a scaffolding and it's like don't be an idiot or something like that. do you remember that advert that's people say that's exaggeration right but it's not really you know dudes dudes do dumb stupid stuff when they're around their friends or when they feel like they need to impress someone right or when they get a little bit too out too much alcohol involved in the system it's like come on man just relax enjoy the night there's no need to be an idiot about it right um let me see what else they've got planned print works coming up so they say nothing else has been um affected by the leak they're going to try and get it fixed sooner as possible but yeah I, they'll be fine they've got an event on the 20th so this whole week they can fix it i mean imagine the amount of damage it must cause the amount of money damage monetary damage they must cause but i'm assuming if you've got insurance it probably won't be that much of a headache but fucking hell so annoying um so yeah they've got an event with uh, moody man and fear parish and omar s coming up by the hydro promotions and then another one the following week with todd turge and roman flugel which is, sounds really interesting too oh dead mass is playing at primos too on the friday the 16th of november i'd like to see what that show's like you know like um 
what kind of music he'd play and stuff. Oh, Bicep is playing too in, in Printworks on a, fir- on a Wednesday. Oh, that's a weird lineup, isn't it? They're playing Wednesday. All days are sold out, right? Jesus Christ. Big up Printworks. Big up, big up Bicep, man. Are they maybe one of the... Oh, no. No, bi- no Bicep on a Friday. All dates, all, fr- all dates on the Friday are sold out. Bicep are huge, aren't they? How flipping popular they are. They've sold out three dates at Printworks. They sold out Wednesday the 21st of November, Thursday the 22nd, and Friday the 23rd. Mamma mia. That is insane. Absolutely insane. What's Afterlife? Oh, that's, oh they've got like, oh, Jesus, what a lineup on Printworks. Afterlife, London, 2018, Tale of Us, Recondite, Addict Cure, Agents of Time, Wu York, Val, Fidels, and Room Tomb, Sigur, Antig- Antigon, and Amandra. That is a mad lineup. Uh, Bicep. Wednesday, who's playing? I oh, fuck going to buy. Fuck, what's a random Wednesday? Isn't it? Who's going to Primark on a Wednesday? It's a weird date. But yeah, fair enough, man. Bicep smashing it. But yeah, um, Hydra. Hopefully they get the repairs done sooner rather than later, and everyone else can go back to clubbing in that amazing space. So what else is on the docket? I wanted to speak about here. Woman blocking a uh, black guy from building is fired. Yeah, man, this story is a shame, right? I guess I have a lot of sympathy for these public shaming stories because I read the book, um, So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. Um, and um, he's appeared a couple of times on Joe Rogan podcast. He's like a British author who writes these amazing little books. And uh, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, basically, the, the main premise behind Publicly Shamed is it explains the story of this young woman who works, I think she was a lawyer, I'm not too sure what her occupation was, but during the whole Ebola um, outbreak era, um, she made like an offhand joke when she, while she was boarding a plane to go to Africa, that she's going to Africa and um, hashtag hope I don't get Ebola, or something along the lines of like a throwaway joke, right? And somehow, I think it was during, I guess Ebola wasn't funny then, um, when it first kind of broke out, when people were getting, you know, do you remember, it, it's like that Bill Burr joke, like there was always, for some reason, everyone that had Ebola had this sudden urge to go to the airport. There was all these people, cases of people in the airport, like coughing and falling over and collapsing and um, airports had to be shut down and, you know, hazmat suits were coming out and shit. It was a really crazy, crazy time. So I guess when the lady went and made the joke, it, there wasn't a lot of humor attached to Ebola just yet. Now, if you mention Ebola, it's like anthrax, right? Same sort of thing. Anthrax was a big deal back in the day and then now if you mention it you kind of mention it like a bit of a joke you can kind of like get away with it so she must have mentioned something along the lines of like oh she's going to africa and she hopes she doesn't get ebola and um somehow between her tweeting it just before she got on a plane and not having it into it before she lands back in africa thinking or back before she lands in africa and 14 hours later suddenly she lost her job her reputation had been ruined um all happened within the space of 14 hours she had no idea and i think some donut on the social media was like oh ha ha she's gonna she's gonna fucking like she's gonna regret that tweet when she lands right like 14 hours later her life's gonna be completely ruined so again if you're like if you're that person that gloats or gets any sort of um um, satisfaction from seeing a celebrity or seeing somebody in public eye getting dragged online or getting ridiculed or shamed like you know what i mean you're yours you, you, there's a special place in hell for you like somebody that, that revels in someone else's pain or suffering and, and again what makes it worse for her she wasn't even that she was i don't think she was well no i think she must have had she might have had less than 100 followers on twitter at that time I don't know how they found her tweet. I'm guessing some psycho was searching on Twitter for people making Ebola jokes and then decided to out her, quote-unquote. But by the time she landed in Africa, everything that she had was completely lost and her life hasn't been the same ever since, right? So some people don't necessarily see that side of public shaming, right, or that cancel culture. Um, it's all well and good. I, f- I think the intentions are good in some, in some respects. The social justice warriors, right? You want you, you don't want people to make like insensitive jokes. You don't want people to you don't want people to say things without any type of consequence, right? In general, I don't think anyone wants that. I don't think anyone because that's that's why people hate entitled rich people, right? Because you feel as if they're entitled because they've never had they've never ever had they never had to deal with consequences in their life, right? They've had enough money to get out of any kind of legal situation. They don't necessarily need to communicate with you. They're you know, they gloat in your face that they have more money than you, they have more options than you, blah, 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 blah. So the lack of consequence is what makes us annoyed, it's what makes some people annoyed um, when a rich person kind of gets away with something, right? Because it means that, you know, it, the regular everyday person probably couldn't get away with it. But sometimes a regular everyday person too um, can make a mistake, right? Can fuck up, um, can make a joke that doesn't really land well or that isn't re- received as a joke by the public, right? And if that's the case, then there should be a, 
education should be some more education and more some maybe more just empathy in general right understanding that oh this person is a person just like me and they fucked up they made a mistake but not trying to use that error that mistake to define their life and try to cancel everything they do and this story recently kind of made me feel a bit sad because i knew what was going to happen straight away right so um in the beginning during the, the beginning of the week a video surfaced of this young lady uh blocking a black dude coming into his apartment building somewhere in america right and as soon as you see the video you know exactly what's going to happen next right she's going to lose her job she's going to get publicly shamed blah, blah blah but it's just sad to see it kind of like go f um happen in real time so the video i'm going to try and get up here so this is basically the video i'm going to play it and i'm going to show on the screen hopefully you guys can hear it i can do you live here i'm sorry the, the keypad is right there you can film me that's okay. fine into my building okay it's my building as well so i need you to get out my way okay what unit oh jesus christ excuse me i'm uncomfortable okay you can be uncomfortable that's that's your discretion you're uncomfortable because you're you i need you to move out my way no. So this did this kind of this kind of back and forth continues for a good I don't know six minutes right he's trying to get in I'm assuming he didn't use his key for because he probably doesn't have one yet or he probably left his at home so when somebody was coming out he was trying to get into his flat and this lady because sometimes in a part like for instance in the in the building that I live at the moment right um there are signs when you come in that say that you should be vigilant when you're opening the door um and to kind of like keep your eye out for people that don't necessarily look like they live in a bit in a block right or in a building but it can be hard because this is this building has like what f i don't know 13 plus floors right um I've, I've probably met i don't know i've probably seen not met i've probably seen 10 people since the since i've been living in here for five plus years right not counting the of people that i don't see right so there's people that i don't know live here who live here generally have lived here maybe longer than i have lived here right so you can't necessarily become the um what do you call it the building security manager of you can't you can't do that because you don't know who lives here um there might be you might have suspicion that someone's being acting a bit shifty and shit but for the most part um no i don't know for the most part, it's hard to kind of like police that kind of thing so in her defense she's kind of quote unquote maybe doing her job being like um a watchful resident right um trying to make sure no one and this no one unwanted comes into the building but there's no way of knowing who's unwanted or who isn't unwanted inside the building for the most part and you know these buildings usually new new um, built buildings have cctvs all over the camera over the building so there isn't you know you could be excused for just letting the person go in and hoping that they get caught on camera if something else goes wrong or the other option that she could have done was uh, let, allowed the guy to go in maybe gave him a little bit of a rude eye or made him aware that you know you're watching him um gone and walk her dog because again she's a woman right she's i don't know what is she gonna even if the guy has got bad intentions what can she physically do she can call the police but she can't physically stop him from doing what he wants to do so it's a little bit redundant what she's trying to do and she's putting herself in harm's way for nothing really she doesn't own the building right um it's just it's just ridiculous so she could have at least just let him in and kept a watchful eye from a safe distance and then if she didn't see the dude if she saw the dude coming up and coming like back and forth or going to into the elevator going up coming down acting weird or you can see him fidgeting in the hallway because some, sometimes the the hallways of uh buildings you can kind of see them from the window and a lot of things that she could have done to kind of assess the situation then, then she could have called the authorities you know white people in america love calling the police so she could have done that later right but she decided not to and again in her defense i think what happened was that he tried to come in she immediately tried to like you know question whether or not he lived there and instead of one of them be being the bigger person and kind of walking away and being the adult about it, they both were locked into this argument and no one went to let go. Plus, the dude decided to take his phone out because, of course, I'm assuming he didn't want... He didn't want her to rewrite the narrative because sometimes without video, um, it can be easy for someone to say, oh, um, he did this and that to me. <clears throat> Case in point, the young lady on the train with um, the black guy where I think they have an argument and you know she kind of like slaps him in the back of the head because he's recording her and he's like laughing and she keeps on you know saying oh you don't you, you can't recall me who do you think you are blah, blah blah they have a little argument and then the video kind of progresses you it cuts to another scene and all of a sudden you hear the train conductor say oh we're not going to move the train anymore until these two gentlemen get off the train and everyone's like what why should they get off the train for they didn't do anything wrong 
And then the video progresses a bit further and you hear one of the ticket coordinate, one of the train conductor guys come um, at the door and he basically says that a woman has accused those two guys of sexual assault. So they have to leave because uh, the police are going to be called. It's like, what? And luckily the guy had it all on video because no one, you know, no one sexually assaulted anyone. I'm assuming the girl just felt embarrassed and decided to make up a lie about two young men. And in this case, I think the same thing happened here. When the, As soon as you take out your phone, even though it is to protect your own back because you don't want someone to lie and say that something else happened, right? I'm assuming some of the things that we heard about, like the barbecue lady story in America where, you know, those guys are doing a barbecue in a park and she's trying to call the police on them and shit because she's, you know... It's, scared the smoke is going to damage her lungs um the guy that was telling that was asking one of the women to show him her key access card because she was in the public swimming she was in like the residential swimming pool thing you know these things people won't believe them unless you have video proof of them so it can be hand handy but sometimes it does also escalate arguments it does also get people backed up and they're like you know what i'm not gonna back down fuck you you don't live here you don't live here you don't live here so she's she's kind of like a dog with a bone she won't let go and she's consistently arguing you just and i'm just watching it i was just like oh man this lady's gonna lose her job isn't she and you know um unfortunately um the news has now come out that she has and i've got i think actually a video here that kind of details what actually happened but it's just a bit sad, man. It's just a bit sad. I don't like seeing this happen to people. But yeah, so it says, um, white woman who blocked black neighbor from building is fired. Uh, let me see this here. Uh, a black man arrived um, at an entrance of the building where he lives in... Cent this is an article on New York Times. I'll attach into the show notes. You can check out yourself. Um, a black man arrived at the entrance to a building where he lives in St. Louis. Um... Uh, late Friday night only to find himself blocked by a white neighbor who demanded proof now the race thing is a, is the race thing important or is it just because she just thought he looked suspicious I don't know or she didn't see him before because St. Louis I'd assume is a pretty black predominant neighborhood right um let me see let me type in here population um of not a black people in St. Louis St. Louis let's see how many black people account for it uh, percentage of african-american in st louis is nearly 49 percent. so it's nearly half the population in that state is uh bloody black so it's weird isn't it right so it's not she hasn't seen a black person before in her life right or there's a bit of prejudice involved there because for the most part there's a lot of black people in that area which is, makes it weird right but anyway i'll just continue um Da, 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 da. Um, late Friday night, only to find himself blocked by a white neighbor who demanded proof he lived there. Please move, ma'am, the man Diarion Tolls, right? Or can't get more black than that name. Uh, says in a video he recorded of the encounter, which shows the woman with a dog on the le leash standing on the doorway at the condominium, condominium complex. Condominium, what a weird word, right? Um, the elder shirts lofts. I can, she responded. Do you live here? I've already answered that question, Mr. Tolls24 replies, as he continues to try to get in. Excuse me, 24 lives in that nice apartment. Well done, dude. Um, but the woman, Hillary Brook Mueller, refused to move as she continued to ask Mr. Tolls what unit he lived in and to see his key fob. Like, that's a bit ridiculous, right? I think even the, even the things that we have, the, the posts we have in our block of flats, tell people to be vigilant. You don't then engage somebody and ask them to show you their fucking driving license and ID. Like, who are you? Like, that's insane. Again, mind your own business. There's The lack of minding your own business in life nowadays is getting people fired, basically, effectively, isn't it? It's got her fired from her job. Now, if you want to come into my building, she begins to say in a video, it's not your building. You're not the owner, Mr. Tolls says. Getting, getting past her, excuse me. Mr. Tolls posted a video of his episode on his Facebook page on Saturday and they quickly spread on social media um, where the then identified woman was derisively referred to apartment patty everyone's got a name in it <laughs> over the weekend miss Mueller's in Piola Tribeca STL which manages real estate elsewhere in the city <clears throat> again this is this this story is, gets more bizarre every time you read it so a white lady lives in St. Louis right a place that has a population where half the population is African American a person that also works for a real estate company, right? That manages real estate all around that area, right? So she's she um, if she's like a I don't know a procurement specialist or she does building maintenance or whatever it may be, or she works in the office, she's seen the residents that live in all their different buildings across that state or whatever it may be, right? So I'm sure she's not 
unfamiliar with what a black person looks like or she's not surprised that there are some African-American people that live in the buildings that they manage. It's just a bizarre story. Again, I, I just think she got locked into an argument and she want to back down. I don't necessarily think she's racist. I just think she was just an idiot, right? Like, mind your own business. Like, keep it moving. You're walking your dog. Go walk your dog and go home, man. Honestly. Oh. Um, said in a statement on his website that it was it had reviewed the video and fired her. Tribeca does not own the building where Miss, Mr. Tolls and Miss Mueller live. The, the, the Tribeca STL family is a minority-owned company that consists of employees and residents from many racial backgrounds. The statement says officials with the company and an apartment complex in St. Louis said, we are proud of this uh, fact and we do not, never will stand for racism or racial profiling at our company. Racial profiling, probably. Racism, no. I'd say, yeah, racial profiling, for sure. Um, it's annoying, though, isn't it? Because if you don't look a certain way, you definitely don't get the rub of the green with some people, which then goes to show that appearances do matter. A lot of people are like, oh, no, appearances don't matter. And they say, well, it counts on the inside. Like um, those people in the body positive movement. Um, you have to just accept, I think a lot of the body positive movement, people that are really spearheading the movement and taking in good directions are accepting the label fat, are accepting that they are quote-unquote social pariahs in that respect right you're not necessarily don't necessarily look like the average person right especially if you're morbidly obese um i think you have to accept that fact and then you have to then try and navigate around the world that is around you i don't think you know that quote the unreasonable man i think there's some people that are really are ridic are, are way of unreasonable they want the world to conform to them completely i think you have to realize that you know you live in a fucked up world people are gonna say fucked up shit but you are allowed to have self-esteem you're allowed to have self-respect but you have to know how people are going to judge you from how you look. And I think even, you know, speaking for myself as a black man, I know for me, I don't necessarily get the rubber the green benefit of that if I'm dressed a certain way. I, you know, and I, I've seen the different reactions that I get when I wear different things or, you know, even when you put on a suit, it's like, it's incredible the amount of compliments, the kind of backhanded compliments that you get for the most part, right? Like as if like you should always be wearing a suit that, you know, you, you scrub up well when you got a suit and you're smartly dressed. I don't think there's a guy on earth that doesn't look better when they put a suit on, especially like a well-made suit everyone looks a lot better but for some reason you know you tend to get that kind of you know derisory tone with some people when they mention that you're you know when you've got like a nice outfit on in some respect so you know when you go to certain job interviews you have to dress a certain way in order to make them believe that you're into stuff you're into what you're inter interviewing about like even me djing i remember once playing i forgot where i was playing once and i was playing an acdc track and someone was like hey man why are you gonna play something different i was like no nah, i'm playing this like you take requests. No, I'm playing this. She's like, oh, you, you don't look like an ACDC fan. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what do you want me to be dressed like? Do you want me to have, like, hair metal, uh, fresh metal hair on and fucking uh, mascara and um, spray on, I don't know, um, leopard jeans and some shit and some cowboy boots? That's when I look like an ACDC fan. It's fucking ridiculous, right? And partly the reason why she was saying it because I was black. If I was a white dude, she would never question if I was an ACDC fan or not. She wouldn't care. But she just assumes because you're black, you have to be into R&B and hip hop. Like, it's like, okay, I do like R&B hip hop a lot, but that doesn't mean that I can't be into other music genres. And it doesn't, and you can't necessarily judge somebody because I always used to hate that anyway. I hated that people would judge. I hate, I hated that people would dress up in the way that they if, dress up according to music that they liked. Even back during the whole like backpack hip hop era, right? When people would wear those big New York New Era hats, massive kind of like baseball jackets, big jeans and Tims. There was no way in hell that you were going back to listening to Beethoven's Concerto, right? You were obviously listening to DJ Premier, Wu Tang, Mob Deep. That's your that's your lick, right? Same could be said for the kids that are into like pop punk or that were into um, metal and stuff, right? Or the guys that you saw. Um, at Scarlet and shit for their kind of pop punk nights and stuff. They were all had the same sort of kind of look going on, right? And I hated that. I kind of just wanted to dress how I wanted to dress and be into music that I wanted to be into. But I didn't want to look a certain way. I didn't want to look like a rasta so I listened to reggae. Like, it's just fucking cringy as fuck. But it happens a lot sometimes. And you have to, you know, I think you have to sometimes accept that fact. But sometimes, you know, I can be a bit... I, I do sometimes give it back to people though when they say those kind of things. Like, you know, I do put them in a the corner. I'm like, oh, you don't look like an ACDC fan. Like, why? Is it because of my colour of my skin? Yeah, and immediately you put them on the back foot. You just drop that race card and it's like kryptonite into a conversation. I fucking love it. They start doing loads of fucking mm, uh, 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 verbal gymnastics. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I've actually got a black boyfriend. Oh, shut up. Get away from the decks. But anyway, um, the story continues. Da -da -da -da. 
Uh, Mueller could not be reached for comment. The Metropolitan Police Department St. Louis said in an email on Monday that it responded to a 99 call that was made because the court did not know if the male subject was a tenant. It was a less, it was the latest known instance of a white person caught on video confronting and sometimes calling the police on a black person performing everyday activities, such as babysitting, eating lunch, and going to the pool. Yeah, there was that. Remember that crazy one of that girl that was sleeping in a university campus somewhere. Uh, because I think it was exam time and she was fucking exhausted. So she just slept on the sofa that was in the kind of in the middle of the foyer. And one of the people in the school decided to call the police on her because they didn't recognize who she was. It was like, mama mia. Um, in Brooklyn, Delhi, I guess you'd be so much aware of racism in America, wouldn't you? As most, less so than in England. England's more of a class thing, right? Um, America's like stone cold, like, do you know what I mean? Black and white kind of thing it's fucking nuts you don't get a benefit of that at all with some people in in america in the brooklyn Delhi last week a white woman called the police after claiming that a young boy touched her behind oh yeah that was really funny um it's funny they're saying behind they're not saying bum um he had not in july a black state lawmaker in oregon said he was reported to police as a special person while taking con- constituents in a suburban neighborhood oh do you remember there was that video too of that dude who was waiting to pick up his no who uh, dropped off a friend in a neighborhood he doesn't live in and then before he left um, to go back to his home, uh, to go back to his house, he decided to do uh, some meditation in his car. He played like a, um, you know, like a guided meditation tape on his uh, on his car stereo, and he was sitting in there like kind of like doing his breath work. And some lady decided to call the police because she, there was a suspicious car sitting in front of her house with a guy closing his eyes. Which again, maybe thinking about it now, there's a black dude in front of your car, in front of your house, in a car with his eyes closed. <laughs> maybe you might want to call the police because you're not sure if he's going to say alhamdulillah before he blows himself up. But um, yeah, man, you don't get benefit of that, do you, in America? You do not get benefit of that at all. Like, you know, with those, even with those police videos, like, get on the floor, get down, get down. They fucking draw the guns on you. And they, I mean, they call in SWAT. They call the police on you when you're having a barbecue. Absolute nutty place to live. But hey, ho, what can you do? People live there. I don't because I'm a human being. What else uh, talk about here that I thought was awesome? Oh, Mad Boy, Sheck West album. Actually, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you've if everyone's listened to it, but I've been listening to Sheck West album for a while now. Sheck West um has kind of burst onto the scene lately, right? Been somebody that a few people have been kind of talking a lot about and saying that you know he's probably the next best big thing that's happening now, right? Um, he put an album called Mad Boy, right? That everyone is going crazy over. Um, Mo Bamba is probably the standout track that you might have heard Sheck West performing at um, which I'm going to play a little bit of now so you guys can check and see what he's about but I'm sure you guys have heard the song played before you guys, you guys, guys, guys that's the fucking annoying you, um, in YouTube personality guy thing they do now isn't it guys, guys, you guys, you guys you want to guess this guys, guys, guys that and what's going on that fucking un- YouTube does does really promote does really attract a certain kind of person doesn't it right that personality they just exist only on youtube that annoying douchey um ridiculous personality only exists on youtube anyway um Sheck West album mo bamba's out um it's he's got this track called mo uh Sheck West album called mud boy sorry he's the standard track is mo bamba um which i'm going to play now for those of you who haven't heard of it but i'm sure you have heard of it so this is Sheck West performing mo bamba where is this at um I'm assuming this is the Governor's Ball, maybe, or the Jay-Z concert, I forgot what that's called, but I'm playing it now. Hey, there we go. So it's sort of like a mix between, like, I don't know, DMX and Max B for me. Energy Max B, some of these melodies are quite Max, D, Energy DMX, of course, but some of these melodies are quite Max B-ish to me in that regard. You know, I guess get being from Harlem, it must have some influence there, but this performance was fucking lit as fuck. Hey, come on. Hey, 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 hey. Check West. So that's a Made in America concert. Check West performing live. It sort of looks akin to. Have you seen um, 
DMX performing at Woodstock where he's performing in front of like, I don't know, nearly half a million people or some shit, right? So it looks kind of similar to that and it's still a sort of energy, you know? Uh, Shekos is a very kind of aggressive kind of rapper. But he had his debut album that came out recently called Mud Boy. He's signed to Cactus Jack, I think, and managed by Good Music. So he's got the kind of, uh, you know, double entendre of being managed or being under Travis Scott. Uh, tutelage and also having the guidance of Kanye West and a few other people so he's kind of got the perfect platform but prior to the album coming out he was tweeting some stuff online or he was kind of seeming a bit annoyed that he wasn't getting any help from Kanye and obviously this was during Kanye's freak out stage so he wasn't probably in the best mental state in order to kind of help him but he was kind of you know he was kind of saying it without saying that he was kind of annoyed that his debut project wasn't getting the love and attention from the label that he will kind of hoped but i kind of countered that and thought you know what for somebody like Sheck west who kind of you know i think he's quite young i'm assuming he's like 20 or something like that, 21 um for a debut project something that he's probably been working on for you know majority of his life and something that isn't going to be the finished article anyway and it's going to be a good chance to kind of show off your kind of artistic capabilities i sometimes do think it's a good idea for debut acts to come out without a cosign we've kind of seen what's happened when you come out with too much of a cosign when you've got like the whole industry behind you when um and you've got a number one song charting everywhere in the shape of a designer when he came out right designer had that issue where he kind of had this, you know, this breakout song, Panda. Um, it kind of went everywhere and he didn't really have a fan base at that time. He just had this breakout single that got kind of like re-edited by Kanye and kind of got the good music push and he was kind of, you know, pro um, meant to be doing big things. Then the whole future, copy and future controversy happened and he kind of disappeared off the face of the earth and now he's kind of reinvented himself as a sort of quasi EDM act of some sort, right? So sometimes um having too many like um big names behind you can be a hindrance because you cannot build up your own actual fan base and people don't really have an idea of what your actual music sounds like they just know what your music sounds like when a big person touches it um, um no homo right but with with check west he has the advantage of having this big track mo Bamba, which is completely him um you know kind of a tribute to mo Bamba, um basketball player but then um he also has the advantage of being able to showcase his array of kind of, you know, his, the kind of strings that he has to his bow. And even a mud boy is a bit scattered. It's probably a little bit too long. There are bits of it that really give you an idea or an impression. Because I think one of the best kind of debut projects, I think, um, of recent memory was probably Playboy Carter's self-titled album, um, self-titled mixtape, Playboy Carter, the first one, right? Because what you got to see was an artist kind of flexing his muscles and showing you just how different or how special he was compared to the pack that were around him, right? Because Playboy Carter is, you know, he's in that weird age range where he kind of gets compared to Rocky and he kind of gets compared to really young kids like Matt Ox and stuff, right? So he's in that weird sort of like in-between ground. But with that self-titled debut mixtape, he was able to show that, no, I'm different. I'm really good compared to these other guys. Like, you're going to like me a lot better than everyone else. And from then on, he's kind of gone on from strength to strength. And I think Sheck West should maybe have the same sort of thinking when it comes to his project and just concentrate on putting out music that is, you know, true to himself, showcases his, uh, his artistry so people can see just how talented he is. And I think Mudboy does a really, really good job of it. Now, I'm not somebody that reads reviews or care, gives a shit what people reviews think, but it's interesting to see that Pitchfork, um, you know, has rated it i think the best new album uh they gave it an 8.4 or something on that rating or something that they do now i don't care about reviews i don't think anyone should go by him but for a debut project for somebody that no one really has really heard of prior to his you know breakout hit to get an 8.2 for pitchfork is a pretty big deal considering the amount of other uh big sort of uh rappers that they kind of like co-sign it got a really good review on pitchfork so if you're somebody that wants to check out um, a new rapper some new music to listen to for you know gym sort of stuff or just in general i recommend you check out Sheck west um, mud boy it's available now on most music platforms or wherever you get your music Anyway, that was episode 115, man. Right on an hour. Right on the button there. We got episode 115 wrapped up like an absolute present. That was amazing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm fucking getting better in this. I'm getting better at this um, every episode. I'm getting better at this. No. I'm getting better at this and this. Jesus Christ. Sometimes the words that come out of my mouth are just pure doo-doo. Anyway, episode number 115 of the Xenos Show has come to a screeching halt. You know, kind of similar to when you're crossing a zebra crossing and there's a car coming by you really, really quickly and they see you last minute and they decide to 
break and then you start to give them that evil eyes across the road like fucking dickhead right you feel as if you're an iron man but if that guy if that guy will get one or two and they press down the accelerator they could mow you down and turn you into a fucking pancake quicker than you could say mo bamba right it's funny isn't it how it, fucking brave you get when you're crossing a zebra crossing like you go yeah i'm a bad boy i'm, I'm gonna take my time absolute loser anyway that being said this has been the next english show episode number 115 thank you so much for tuning in as always for more information regarding myself and any potential dj gigs such as the ones coming up on the 19th at the end of the week on friday at tap east check out my site at www.agostinozinga.com that is www.agostinozinga.com you can find the link in the show notes or in the description um, which will be attached to this podcast if you're watching on youtube it will be below if you're on the podcast you just click the show notes and you see all the information there regarding more show gigs um blog and all that sort of malarkey is on there i'm going to upload some new photography pieces i've got a store on there with one t-shirt the dj and t-shirt with decks on the back if you like to dj or if you like dj and culture you should buy that t-shirt it's available now limited edition check that out too um support my sponsor at audible.com for just aggie that's audible.com for just a double gg why to claim one free book credit as well as a 30 day free trial audible is one of the best platforms for audio books over 400 000 titles probably more at the time of speaking sometimes they're rated by the author themselves which makes a book come to life check that out so you can claim one free book credit as a 30 day um, free membership at audible.com for slash a double g g y i'll be seeing you guys again probably tomorrow because friday is not a good time to do a uh, podcast because i've got to wake up early in the morning go to work at normal shift in time blah 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 who cares about that this has been negative news english show episode number 115 thank you so much for tuning in it's been an absolute pleasure to have your company and i'll see you again very very soon peace out motherfuckers <laughs>